everyone, and thank you for joining me for Steam Monday. Today we have a really fun challenge. It's called the Barbie Bungee Challenge. You heard it right. We are going to be throwing Barbie or whatever action figure you have at home off of the kitchen table, and we're going to see if we can keep her safe using a bungee cord. You're going to need some supplies to get started for this project. You're going to need a bunch of rubber bands, some masking tape, a yardstick or a ruler, and it would be helpful if you had something like a binder clip, but if you don't have anything like that, you can just tape Barbie right to the table. So let's get started making a bungee for Barbie. So for this steam challenge, we do have a printout. It's in the comments below, so if you'd like, you can print it out at home. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions, the materials you need, but most importantly, it has our graph that we're going to be using and a little table so we can collect our data on Barbie's jumps. All right, so make sure that you can print that out or you can just open up the document and make your own graph on a piece of paper. You don't really have to print it out. We are going to be building a bungee for Barbie and we're going to be testing the bungee using two, four, six, eight, and ten rubber bands. We're going to see which one is the safest for Barbie off of a specific distance. So before Barbie can take her first jump, we need to make a bungee to attach to either her feet or to her waist. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two rubber bands and you're going to make a slip knot. So watch how I do this. You take your rubber bands, you put one through the other, and then you loop it back through like that. So that's a slip knot. Here, I'll do it one more time. So you have two rubber bands, you push one through the other, and then you loop the one you pulled through, through again like that. So once you have your initial slip knot, what you're going to do is you're going to take the rubber band and you're going to very tightly wrap it around your Barbie or your action figure's feet. You want it to be tight or they could come out of their bungee and that would not be good. I'm going to do two different Barbies because they weigh different weights, so they're going to fall at different rates and they're going to need different numbers of rubber bands probably. So you could do this with a Barbie and a Captain America action figure or any action figure. You could even use stuffed animals if that's what you have. And you could see how many rubber bands you need to use for each different doll or action figure you're using. All right. So, my Barbies have their bungees attached to their ankles. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having them stand at the edge of the table and taking their first jump. So, the data we're trying to collect today, we're using two, four, six, eight, and 10 rubber bands. So we already have the one rubber band attached to Barbie's feet. So to attach the other one, you're gonna use that same slip knot that we did before. So, you're gonna loop it through like that, and then back through again. So this is what Barbie looks like with her two rubber bands for her first jump. So like I said, I'm gonna be using a binder clip for this, and I'm just putting it at the edge of the table, and you're gonna do the slip knot through the binder clip. go. So I'm going to set that one up and then I have a second Barbie that I'm going to set up and then I'm going to show you how we're going to be taking our measurements. So we have just a little bit more set up before we can start our Barbie bungee jump challenge. So we want to see how many inches Barbie falls when she has two rubber bands. We also want to keep Barbie safe so we don't want her to hit the floor. So what you're going to need is either a tape measure or a yardstick and you are going to measure the height from which she's jumping. Right now, we're starting at a 29 inch jump. So I took some masking tape and masked it off at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 wow. to see how close she gets to the ground with two rubber bands, because that's where we're starting. And we're gonna do each jump three times because the science, sometimes you get different results every time you do the experiment and it's good to get an average. So to start off, we're gonna put Barbie up here and you're just going to let her free fall forward. All right, so for two rubber bands, she's
she fell to the 20 inch mark. So she fell down 20 inches the first time. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your little graph out and you're gonna fill in the data. So for two inches here, right there, in our first test, she went down to the 20 inch mark. So we're gonna do that two more times. All right, up we go, Barbie. Whoa, that one she fell much further. She came all the way down to the 25 inch mark. So I might have pushed her a little bit too hard over the edge. That's why we're doing more than one test for each rubber band distance. So I'm gonna add that onto my graph. And we're gonna do our final jump with Barbie number one. Ready? Ooh, that one was like only this far from the ground. So I would say that was about 28. So the variance between the two is eight inches. That's a lot of difference. That's why we're doing this experiment three times with each jump. Just for fun, we're gonna test the other Barbie real quick and see if she falls just as far or if she doesn't weigh as much. Good Barbie number two. To the edge of the table. Ready and, ooh, she went down to 25. Again. Ready? Ooh. She almost hit, I would say 28. Last jump. Here we go. Say 28 again. She almost hit. So I think what we need to do now is find a higher surface so we can add two more rubber bands to see how far they're going to drop down using four rubber bands. So now I put Barbie at a 40 inch height with her four rubber bands. So we are going to be measuring how close to the ground she gets. I put the mask on the side over here so that you can see how far she falls. And we're going to do it three times for each Barbie. All right. We'll start with our rock star Barbie over here. Oh, she fell all the way to 40. Let's do it two more times. That one was even further, 45. Last one. Back to 40. So let's record that information on our chart. 40, 45, 40. Now for our Disney Barbie. Again. Ooh, that one was further. 40. 38, 38, 40. So this is what your chart should start to look like. You can do the averages at the end, or you don't have to do them at all, but it's a good way to practice some math skills at home. We need to find something higher to throw Barbie off with six rubber bands. So now we have to have Barbie take her jump with eight rubber bands and see how far she falls. Okay. Ready? All right, we have one more to go. Barbie with 10 rubber bands. Let's see how far she falls. All right, guys, so we're at 10 rubber bands now. So we're gonna do all 10 and we're gonna measure Barbie's drop. All right, 
Here we go. Number one. No injuries today. Way to go, Barbie. Now that Barbie has taken all of her jumps without injury, we are going to work on our table and on our graph. This is where projects that we provide at the library can be differentiated at home. What that means is if you have an older kid who was working on this, then they can probably do the math where they add the three numbers together and divide by three to get the average. If you have a younger one, you may not do the average at all. Or you could do the average together to show them that that's how it's done, and then you can graph together. I also left the graph kind of empty because you can change this project to fit the needs in your home. So as you can see on this axis, there is no distance traveled. So if you only wanted to do this project using four rubber bands and set of 10, you could totally do that. And then you would just change the distance to inches or centimeters. But because I use 10 rubber bands, I'm going to change my axis right here and have it go every 10 inches. So now that I have my averages for each one of our tests with two, four, six, eight, and 10 rubber bands for our Rockstar Barbie and for our Disney Barbie, I am going to graph them. And like I said, you can change the graph to meet your needs. So I'm going to do the distance traveled here going by tens. So, so 10 inches, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But if you only end up using four rubber bands, you can do inches or centimeters. And down here, I am going to put two rubber bands, four, six, eight, ten, and we're going to see what the graphs end up like. So now that I've finished both of my graphs, you can sit down with your child and talk about the relationship between the number of rubber bands and the distance traveled. There are different trends that you could talk about and interesting things. For example, with our Disney Barbie, one thing I noticed is between eight and 10 rubber bands, she didn't drop that much further. So that is something that you could talk about, maybe the reasons why that happened. We have one more fun jump today. And that's it for Steam Monday. We hope that you tune in next week. And if you're not a member of our Facebook group, please join. It's SCPL Youth and Families. Thanks for joining me. So our Barbie friends are going to take one last jump today. Our Disney princess is going to go first. And they have 16 rubber bands. You ready? All right, she didn't hit, that's good. And now our rock star Barbie also has 16 rubber bands. She went down further. Thank you for joining Barbie Bunchy today.